Hello, and welcome to the Idea Space podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. My name is Jen Liddy, and I'm your host. This week, actually this month, I'm talking about a new idea. Every month I pick a different thing that keeps my clients from having more time in their life and getting more done. This month, I am talking about the idea of resistance. So what's resistance and how does it keep us stuck? Well, let me share with you. You know that feeling like I don't want to? I, it comes up in very many places in our lives. And some of the things we don't want to do are, are fairly easy things, but we say things like, I don't want to go to that party. I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to take that risk. I don't want to do that hard thing. That I don't want a feeling is called resistance. And this month I'm exploring it, sharing what it looks like, explaining how it keeps us stuck. And most importantly, I'm going to tell you what you can do about it, how you can remove resistance from your life so you can get more done. So let me start with a ridiculous example of resistance from my own life. This story starts back in 2011 when I had a recurring rash around my mouth for months. I had gone to the doctor, I'd gone to the dermatologist, but nothing would touch it. A friend recommended that I try this functional nutritionist that she knew. Now, a functional nutritionist is someone who examines how food affects your whole system, including your brain and gut connection. This isn't somebody who's just looking at calories in and calories out. A functional nutritionist is an expert who understands that what you're eating not only affects your body composition, but also every other system in your body. And I was so desperate to get this horrible rash off my face that I was really willing to look at food as a potential source of the problem. So I was really open to trying this new approach and I had absolutely no resistance. It turns out after I met with my functional nutritionist that lots of food was causing me many problems, stuff I hadn't even started noticing yet. Stuff like um, insomnia, exhaustion, my weight, and a high level of irritability. Georgia, my nutritionist, she ran a ton of tests, read through my blood work thoroughly, and then put me on a protocol that was very heavy on veggies and lean meat. And worst of all, she took bread out of my diet. Gluten, she said, was a problem. And remember, it's 2011. I had never heard of gluten before, and the gluten-free lifestyle the way it is now and how mainstream it is had not yet been brought to the forefront of people's minds. So she takes bread out of my diet, tells me I can't eat gluten, and I am pissed. I was super upset because I had grown up on bread and pasta. They were staples in my family's diet, and I, worst of all, found really great comfort in foods like bread and bagels and pasta and crackers, etc., etc., etc. So I was, I felt so freaked out. I remember this part really vividly because I saw her right before Christmas in 2011. And the thoughts in my head were, oh my God, if I do what she wants me to do, I'm going to ruin my Christmas. I'm going to ruin all the parties I could go to. Uh, We were going to go to Florida right after Christmas. And I was like, this is going to ruin my trip to Florida. I won't be able to eat whatever I want to. To put it mildly, I was resistant to her suggestions for me. So I would even say I was having a full-blown toddler tantrum inside my head. So I was beyond resistant. Let me tell you something. That tantrum read, led me to some really, really harmful thoughts. And I quickly came to the conclusion that this was all bullshit. I started to adopt the belief that Georgia could not really help me. I thought that her changes were far too extreme, and I refused to believe that this giving up gluten nonsense was going to have any effect or change anything in my life. 
I resisted this for so long. And here's what it looked like when I when I really kind of settled in and nestled into my resistance. First, resentment. I was very resentful that this had to happen to me. I was deep in victim mode. And I would say I cultivated a deep, intimate relationship with resentment. I mean, I had thoughts like, what would it even be like to eat without bread? Is it even worth eating? I mean, where is the joy if there is no bread? Where is the comfort? I mean, you can see the resistance here, right? And the other thing that happened, I was I would talk to people about the situation. I would say, I went to this functional nutritionist, and this is what she told me. And she says, if I do this, this rash will go away. And they would hear what I was trying to do, and they'd say, oh my God, I could never go without bread. I'd never be able to do that. And I'll tell you what, that didn't help the resistance either. I totally bought into the fact that, well, if they don't have to do it, why do I have to do it? Why is this happening to me? This is so unfair. This is so hard. Wah! I mean, I was such a baby. And for a long, long, long time, like longer than is reasonable to admit, I had a major love affair with resentment. Then fear showed up because I finally realized that the rash wasn't going away and none of the other symptoms were going away and that maybe she was on to something with this gluten nonsense. And so when I finally got rid of the resistance and the resentment, I was like, I actually don't know how to get rid of gluten. I don't know what that looks like. So I would, I'd go to the grocery store and wander around and think, what the hell is gluten? Will I never be able to eat another piece of bread again? And then what if gluten's in other foods? Where is gluten hiding? And so I was really fearful. So these are some yucky emotions, ladies and gentlemen. This is like resentment, fear, resistance. These are not emotions that move you forward. These are not thoughts that move you forward. This is the kind of stuff that will suck the life out of you and make you feel like you have zero time or energy to spend on the things you really want to do. You cannot be creating and generating something that lights you up when you are living in resentment, fear, and resistance. Now, eight years later in 2019, here I am recounting these thoughts and worries. And, and I feel kind of silly saying this stuff to you because I understand what a toddler I was being. And now, of course, I understand where gluten lives and I understand how to avoid it. I mostly live a gluten-free lifestyle. I actually live a grain-free lifestyle at this point. But in 2011, I was resentful and fearful. And then what happened at the time was once I figured out the resentment and I figured out the fear, then came the negotiating with myself. And this, this is what that looked like. Well, it's Sunday. I'm just going to have some pasta today and then I'll start over again on Monday. And there was now a sneakiness to my eating. I would say, oh, I can have a bagel and deal with the ramifications. But if no one saw me eat it, I felt a little less guilty. But that did not serve me. I mean, I was still eating the crap that made me sick. And the resistance to going gluten-free lasted for years. It's embarrassing to say, but it lasted for years. And I will still say I have a bit of resistance to it, but it's way different than it used to be. This was exhausting for me. And I wonder like, how this might be resonating with you. I wonder if there's something in your life that you know you have to do and you're constantly resisting it. And maybe you feel resentment or fear or you negotiate with yourself. And if you're like me, I bet this takes up a lot of your mental time and energy. And I want to share with you that there is another way to make these changes. It wasn't my way of doing things, but for evidence, I present to you my husband, John. So about two months after I saw Georgia in 2011 for the first time, and I was supposed to give up gluten so I could feel better, my husband, John, gets the diagnosis of celiac disease. He got this in February of 2012. His doctor basically ran a few tests, said you have celiac, so no more gluten for you. And this is what my husband did. Oh, okay. And he literally never touched another beer, another burger bun, another bagel ever again. He just walked away. And I marveled at this when he was doing it. I was like, how are you doing it? Where's your anger? Where's your fire? Where's your resistance? And he's like, Jen, the doctor said I can't. So I don't. And I have to ask you guys, honestly, which way sounds easier? His way 
was easier than all of the mental gymnastics that I did, which I thought at the time was much easier than just walking away. So why do we do this stuff to ourselves? We stay in resistance because we don't want to do the hard thing. It is as simple as that. And you are probably finding resistance in lots of types of hard things in your life. And for you, it might look like, you know, planning. Maybe you're a creative woman and planning feels ridiculous to you. So you resist planning. And I'm here to tell you that I know planning is the easiest way to actually make some stuff happen. Uh, Maybe you find resistance in making decisions. You're a person who doesn't want to commit to something because you really like thinking about, well, what if this or what if that? You don't want to pigeonhole yourself. But making decisions, I know, is actually easier for you. Or maybe you don't have the courage to take a risk. Maybe you know you need to invest in a program or do something differently, but you're not willing to take the risk because you don't feel courageous enough. And I know that it is in taking the risk that is actually easier. So it's like my husband had the key. He had the easy button. I was just resisting it for years. And I wonder if you're resisting it too. Our brains keep telling us why things are hard, and it keeps telling us, here's an example of why you shouldn't do this, and here's an example of how it's going to ruin your life. Your brain is there, remember, to merely help you be safe and to help you be efficient. My brain got very busy telling me why I should totally ignore an expert's advice and experience and instead refute her, refuse what she wanted me to do and negotiate with myself constantly. Now, maybe you do the same thing. Maybe you refute, refuse and negotiate. And if you are doing that, I just want to offer to you, you're probably working a lot harder than if you just kind of moved through the resistance. When we rebel against doing something that's truly in our best interest, something that will ultimately serve us, that's what resistance is. And although it doesn't seem like it at first, resistance keeps us from taking chances or having ease. When we refuse to plan or move forward or try something new, we're making our lives harder. So I'm curious, what are you currently resisting? We all have areas of our lives that we don't want to make changes in, even though we know it would serve us and move us toward our goals. So what does your particular strain of resistance look like? For me, it's resentment and fear. Those are the things that I feel when I move into resistance. I feel it in my gut and my brain gets very, very noisy. My mind will offer insane options, like trying to skirt the issue and move around it rather than just trying on the straightforward but very uncomfortable solution. The gluten thing is such a great example, especially when you bring my husband's way of doing it into it. Like he just walked away from it. That was actually easier than eight years of mental negotiations. I want to tell you, resistance wastes a lot of time and energy, and I have personally lived it, and I personally watch my clients struggle with this. They'll, they'll say, what's the answer to this problem? And I'll give it to them, and they're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So they'll keep twisting in the wind trying to figure it out when I have the answer for them. It's just merely uncomfortable. So do you waste time and energy with your own mental gymnastics? Do you know you need to make a change or take a risk to get what you want? Have you admitted to yourself yet that you're doing that? Because that's the first place to start. Now, if you have already admitted it, let's keep going. What do you really want? That's the thing I want you to ask yourself. Because if you're in resistance, you may have lost sight of what you really wanted. I wanted that rash around my face, around my mouth to go away. But I kind of lost sight of that when I heard I had to give up gluten. It's like I ran from the room with my hair on fire going, no, when ultimately I completely forgot why I was even there in the first place. So what do you want? Start there. If you've already admitted that you're in resistance, the next question is, okay, what do I really want? And then the second question is, what's in my way? Another way to ask this question is, what's the uncomfortable shit you have to do in order to achieve that goal? Now, most likely you already know what it is, but the biggest problem for you, what's in your way is your own thoughts. Here are probably some of the thoughts you might be having if you're in resistance. Why is this happening to me? I don't know how to do this. This feels too hard. Other people don't have to deal with this shit. 
And then you kind of go back to the, why is this happening to me? Those victim-y kind of thoughts keep you really, really stuck in low energy, low vibration, and you're not moving forward. I want to promise you, you can have it be different, but the first thing you need to do is get real with yourself. You can only move forward when you get out of victim mode and start creating the thing that you want. Do you remember what you want? So notice when you remember what you want, if you're feeling any of these feelings, resentment, fear, confusion, sadness, guilt, or apathy. If you're feeling any of those feelings, you are likely sitting in resistance. If you're squashing those feelings down, I promise you, you are not moving toward your goal. And if you are, it feels like you are absolutely walking through quicksand. I also promise you that this squashing down of the feelings, they will come back and bite you in your ass at some point. Why? Because the things we want, they don't go away. Let me wrap this all up for you. I resisted going gluten-free for about 18 months. I negotiated with myself, I played dumb, and I hid my eating. My rash would get better and I'd lose a few pounds and then I would go back to my old habits. The rash would come back, so would the weight. 18 months in, it got so bad I had to go to an endocrinologist who confirmed for me that I'm now not only sensitive to gluten, I now had celiac disease. I mean, I could go on and on with this story. Eventually, I got diagnosed with prediabetes. But it suffices to say that now, eight years later, I am not only gluten-free, but I'm totally grain-free. And yes, it sucks. And you might be listening to this going, how does she do that? Believe me, girl, if I can do it, anybody can do it. It sucks. It's hard. But it's the reality. And ultimately, it makes my life better because I feel better. What is the thing you're resisting that'll make your life better? What's your goal that when you reach it will make you feel so much more easeful, happy, and successful? How would it feel to be in ease, to feel happy, to be successful? I'll tell you what, those are incredible feelings, but you might be keeping yourself from them if you remain in resistance. In my online coaching group, the creative, busy women there are getting to ease happiness and success much more quickly than they ever anticipated. Last week, one of them told me that she'd crossed something off her list that had been there for six months. What's been on your list for six months? And how would it feel to cross that shit off your list? I know personally what that feels like. And if you're ready for some ease and success, then you need to move through the resistance. It's really hard to do that alone. And that's why I created this community called the Idea Space. Bring your idea forward, make it a reality, have a coach at your disposal and a community so that you know you're not crazy, you're not alone, and there's nothing wrong with you. Anyone who joins during the month of March will get a private 30-minute one-on-one coaching session. And in that session, I pull out your 90-day goals and create a plan for you with micro steps so that you can actually get going. You can check out this program at www.genlity.com, of course. And there's a couple of freebies there that you might like to help you use time better. But I would love to talk with you and see whether this program is right for you. Next week, I'm bringing to you a woman who couldn't figure out if it was time to leave her job and start a business. She had a big job and she was really successful, but she had to overcome resistance in order to achieve her goal. And you, her story is really interesting because she had to figure out how to maneuver through the resistance. So thank you for joining me today. I would love to chat with you. And I, if anything, please leave me a review so that more women can find this podcast and learn how to move through their resistance so that they can have more time to create the things that they love. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the idea space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time. 
by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye. Thank you.